His crossing over to the outposts of human civilization from the wilderness of the wild is not exactly known. Widely assumed, however, is that sometime around 15,000 years ago, the Grey Wolf was domesticated by the Central Asians, and human society was thus introduced to a pet that for ages, centuries, and generations has served mankind as a protector and a praiseworthy companion, the dog. Thanks to its various behaviors, sensory capabilities, powerful muscles, fused wrist bones, and sharp teeth for catching and tearing, no wonder dog breeds show more variation in size, appearance, and performance than any other domestic animal. Uniquely and quite rightly nicknamed as man's best friend, in almost every culture and language practiced on the planet Earth, dogs have lived and worked with humans in innumerable roles and ways. No wonder around the world, canine breeding, training and handling is rightly recognized as a dedicated discipline and widely sought for enhancing efficiency of various state organs. The Army Dog Breeding Training Center and School was founded in 1952 in Rawalpindi with an aim to not only breed, rear, train and issue trained quality dogs for combat and other duties in the field, but to also train officers and soldiers in effectively handling the canines. Over the last more than half a century of its existence, the Army Dog Breeding Training Center has rendered innumerable services in providing quality dog and human resources in guard, tracking, mine detection and infantry patrols. With the introduction of latest technology and scientific gadgets in the modern warfare, dog's role has though limited in categories like messenger dog and mine detection the ever-changing realities have nevertheless assigned new tasks to them as well. The tentacle usage of dog's strong sniffing ability as an essential security cover to the VVIP routes and installations and their effective usage during rescue operations have surely provided dog training with new meanings and vistas in the modern times. The Army Dog Breeding Training Center and School has been further subclassified into three branches, namely the Breeding Wing, the Training Wing, and the Operational Wing. Each headed by an officer of the rank of a major. The wings are well equipped and bear a distinct record of excellence and exemplary service. The prime and foremost to the center is to retain and produce quality and pure breeds of canines. Hence ensuring the retention and presence of the peculiar qualities required for the multidimensional tasks ahead. This makes the role of breeding wing of immense precaution and care. Complete family lineage of each mating animal is kept in order to ensure the purity of the breed. One of the regular and most popular breeds raised here is the German Shepherd Dog. Considered the most reliable and the intelligent of all the dogs, with a wonderful capacity to learning. The breed has proved equally successful as a police dog, rescue operator, sniffer, agility demo, and mob controller. Next in line is the Labrador an obedient, dependable, and multi-talented breed. Its otter-like tail and webbed toes enable it to be an excellent swimmer, while the sharp sniffing abilities has earned it a permanent place with the arms explosive detectors, mine trackers, and anti-narcotics forces. Besides these two major breeds, 
The center also excels in producing quality Doberman pinchers, which are commonly used as guard dogs due to their offensive and sensitive nature. And the small and agile English Springer Spaniels, which are trained for mine detection, arms explosive search, and narcotic sniffing. In a controlled temperature environment, the pups are constantly monitored for diet and medication. Medical examinations are carried to detect any early infections or any contagious diseases, while after keeping the young ones in the dam milk for up to six weeks, proper balanced feed is provided after weaning. The pups also start receiving their early trainings in shape of exercise and play sessions, while regular deworming and vaccination remains an integral part of the whole period. Qualified veterinarians are available round the clock for prompt examinations and treatment of any sick case. The center has a well-maintained animal laboratory and operation theater, equipped with its own x-ray and ultrasound facilities. It's also at the breeding wing, where each born pup is properly documented with a detailed history sheet. It's through this history sheet that a pedigree tree of each dog is kept that covers three generations. At the same time, every dog is tattooed and given a serial number on its right ear for identification for the rest of its life. The whole training is centered on dogs' extraordinary sniffing abilities. Nature's most precious gift to the animal, a newly born pup will not be able to open its eyes for the next 14 days. And yet thanks to the extraordinary smelling sense, the baby is able to locate its mother and reach out to her for suckling. This amazing capability is brought into man's benefit through a systemized set of training. This training can distinctly be categorized into two phases, namely the basic training and the specialized training. The basic training begins at the early age. This includes daily exercise and running, which ensure baby canines strong joints, muscles and tendons, capable enough to sustain future stress of work. Exercises are simple and fun to begin with, like chasing the ball, which serves as an incentive throughout the course of future training. In fact, it would remain the sole charm for the innocent animal in achieving the assigned tasks for the rest of his life. It is also through this incentive-based initiative that a dog is encouraged to develop an emotional bond with his handler, which remains vital for the animal's future behavior and discipline. Upon attaining a certain level of association with handlers, dogs are taught five commands of basic obedience. Heel, sit, down, stay, and come. From now onwards, they would walk to the left side of their handler and respond swiftly to his signals and verbal commands. What is more, it is in this basic phase that the animal is made to become agile and active by making it clear different obstacles. On the other hand, the dog's vigilance and alert nature is successfully used to train the animal for watch and guard duties. They are taught to give early warning in case of any suspicious activity and attempt and quickly attack the possible culprits. In the aftermath of 9-11 and the resurgence of global terrorism, suicidal attacks and bomb explosions on civilian and innocent targets has seen a steep rise. This requires more innovative and accurate techniques to counter the heinous designs. Dogs' sniffing powers are of a great asset in this fight. Early detection of explosive material, tracking of hidden mines, and quick identification of any human carrier of explosives remains a vital key to foil the possible attack.
A job well done by the canines. It's a great pride for the Army Dog Center that its trained canines won an international acclaim during the United Nations-led demining operations in Sudan and other war-ravaged African countries. The same principle of sniffing is also used for detecting narcotics, drugs and other contrabands. Thanks to the apt professionalism of the center, the anti-narcotics force has been successful in recovering large amounts during the search operations at international airports and other points of possible smuggling. The fatal earthquake of October the 8th, 2005 saw a great tragedy of unparalleled magnitude, hitting the north of the country in the early hours of the day. As thousands lost their lives, many were trapped deep under the debris with no clue of their exact location. In such an hour of trial, the sniffing dogs proved to be of great value as many lives were saved thanks to the exact detection of the trapped by the animal. It is the same great service which this faithful and charming animal has been providing in the adverse and extreme weather conditions of the Himalayan peaks. Over the ice-clad Siachen Glacier, dogs have shown quite surprising results. They were able to indicate dead bodies buried seven feet deep in the snow. Besides the animals, the training wing also runs a dedicated course for the personnel entrusted to deploy the animal. Officers and javans from different units are regularly sent to the center, besides other members of the law enforcing agencies to undergo various courses pertaining to the specific disciplines. In fact, it is the efficiency of the dog platoon and the phenomenal success of its trained dogs as early warning and alarming systems, which has seen renewed surge for its deployment at every strategic and sensitive place during the recent times. As a result, the operational wing of the center has been established with a task to handle such tasks it's required to have a constant liaison with various state organs entrusted with the responsibilities of maintaining the security and enforcing law. The centuries-old association between man and the dog has now taken new meanings. The faithful animal continues to serve humanity in ways far bigger and significant than at any point of time of our known history. The change of times has only seen dogs' utility finding new vistas. How far more dynamic will it become in the days and years to come? Only time will tell.